think our next item of business is 9-4, the RMA Spring Convention and the resolutions, which, hallelujah, there's something good about the pandemic. Madam Reeve, I don't think, I don't see Lionel. I don't know if he's just got his video off. But, uh... Oh, thank you. I'll send him a message. And you know what? It's just resolutions. We can start because they'll be talked about again. And we're all sort of on our own when it comes to resolutions anyhow. So this first one um, from Woodlands County. <laughs> It, it really must be irksome when people show up and like this letter that they've attached and saying, you know, well, this is what we'll pay for taxes and you just sign off here. <laughs> like it's pretty rude, isn't it? I don't know how lucky they'll be or anybody will be in getting the Alberta Energy Regulator to get more involved though, because I don't know if any the rest of you have ever been involved in any conversations, but anything I've been involved with, energy ministers, they always sort of, it's like the Alberta energy regulator isn't gonna go there, but somebody should. Any uh, questions or conversations on that, that resolution, Brian? Well, I, I agree with the resolution. I guess the only thing that is a little bit dismaying is when you you know as matt brought forward at our last council meeting about special areas signing off on a on quite a sweetheart deal with one of these i mean that sort of sets the bar for how they're going to deal with all municipalities when it comes to oil and gas and it i just i just think it's the wrong attitude to have i, I like what matt came up with last time as far as 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 a way to see their way through it um writing off this and then having you know another, the next one show up at your doorstep saying well this is what we're offering you you better take it or leave it is uh is definitely something that is is disturbing for me and you know when it comes to the responsibilities of your taxes and then you know when times are good you expect everything to be built the way you want it and times are bad it's like well now you gotta now you gotta help us out a little bit anyways i i just think it's a uh, we need to support this. I know there's, it's, I guess the only thing that I, that I had trouble with is that as, as is always the case, the, the wording in them advocate, like advocate to me is not strong enough. And I don't know, I'm not, I'm not into wordsmithing and I'm definitely not into making motions to amend uh, municipalities things, but like, I think there needs to be a stronger word than advocate. That just means like, well, we'll go talk to them. There needs to be some teeth put into these things. Don't disagree. Don't know what else you can, yeah. What would the English teacher put in there in that? In that uh... Well, you could, I guess they're taking a gentle approach or I, I, that's that's all you can do you can demand but uh it's an ask that's about it um uh, wayne uh, this is actually just uh tell, requesting that rma approach the government uh, they're gonna put as much pressure on the government as they can anyway so I don't know if uh, replacing ad, ad advocate is gonna do any do anything to assist this resolution you're probably no. right it just I just get a little frustrated when it seems like you're 
you know, if I interpret it the right way, it seems like it's so you're going there with your hat and saying, well, can you help us out and to do this? But please, please do it for us. But we really can't. You're not going to put any teeth in there for us. And I guess that's where it, I don't know. That's, you're all right. I'll just shut up. No, and you're right too, Brian. But anyhow, we'll move on to uh, the other one, Police Act Review. <clears throat> Boy, anything I've had to do with uh, the whole concept of replacing the RCMP with a provincial police force at this point in time is not positive for municipalities. So it'll be very interesting to see what the province does with this when their consultants come out with their reports in April. This is this is also not just about uh, the, the replacement of the police or the RCMP, it's more about the funding model as well. But Molly, have, yeah, Kelly. just a, just a comment on that. Um, maybe we as municipalities could get together and go to the province and offer the province a deal on what we're willing to pay, similar to what oil and gas is doing to municipalities. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> <laughs> we, we should start just, uh, yeah, submitting what we feel like, basically. We'll choose, we'll decide. No other comments on that one. Uh, personal cannabis production for medical use. Occasionally I go on to Martin Shields Bull River constituency meetings where he invites Reeves and mayors and MLAs and other MPs to participate. And this is the only place I have heard of this uh, being a problem and, and it has come out of the county of Wheatland and It is an interesting uh, loophole where some of these uh, sort of small, supposedly small facilities have got rather large and are escaping a lot of the, the regulations. So it'll be an interesting one to see if, if it's more province-wide because when I first heard about it, I, I couldn't think of anything that we've never had a problem like this, have we? Like I know of no, no facility within the county that has become a sort of group home grow big operation for medical, personal medical prescription filling, I guess, or however you would call it. But um, the county of Wheatland definitely has been concerned about this for a while, and I don't know how many, how many uh, of these operations they have or suspect they have. And then this, the fourth resolution is the one that I mentioned to Todd. Um, I mean, it's it's about money and about the sustainability of well, sustainable funding for our. our Ag Service Board Provincial Committee. And you can see it's Brazil County and how the amount of money is diminishing, obviously. But it looks like there's a bit of a plan in place. Todd, do you know anything more about this? If you guys uh, remember, at the Ag Service Board Conference, I believe we voted to fund the Provincial Ag Service Board Committee Executive Director position um, through, instead of just through the registrations to the Ag Service Board uh, Conference, but it, it would be a specific check made to uh, the, the, for the Provincial Committee Executive Director. And I, uh, I was looking back to see if I could get the minutes to, to get more of the full details, but they haven't posted those on the Ag Service Board website yet. Um, but I'm relatively certain that we passed it and it's kind of a scaled approach to funding. The first year was a couple hundred, then the next year was another extra little bit and, and it kind of went on and I think it capped out around $400 a municipality or, or thereabouts. Um, 
I think what Brazil has put together here is kind of asking for the province to uh, to maybe reinstate the funding that it once had, and that's that that's where our uh, each municipality that that money that we're paying on a per year for that executive director, we're replacing money that used to come from the province to fund that position. I think that's where their intent is. It's not a really wordy um, resolution. Um, I think that they've made some decent points where there's a lot of downloading. Um, you know, getting rid of the 310 farm was was definitely detrimental to our uh, rate payers to look for some unbiased opinions. Uh, getting rid of some of the, uh, the technical support that we have in researchers and uh, you know, especially for us with having CDC South and losing lots of staff there. We lost a lot of technical expertise. Um, so we see a few more phone calls, which is just more time and time is, is paid for by the municipality. So there's that, plus the province has reduced our funding. So there's their loss there. And I think that's what Brazo is kind of getting at where there's lots of deletions in what we're getting and additions in responsibilities. And uh, they're maybe looking for that executive director in the Ag Service Board Provincial Committee to be a responsibility of provincial funding instead of municipal funding. Does that make sense? It's a long ways around. No, it's uh, absolutely makes sense. And it's a ongoing cry, I guess. Of the, I mean, the police the policing thing is the same thing, the, the downloading stuff. So I don't think it's going to go away. But thanks, Todd. Any questions about it? Pretty straightforward. And then the other one, um, the MD of Ranchland is the preservation of water quality and access to water. Um, seems like a reasonable ask as well. So there's most, uh, some people are not being, are going to attend uh, spring convention next week, but I think there's quite a few people are. So I guess we'll have more opportunity to talk about them. Um, carrying on on the agenda assessment model changes. Um, a letter was sent. I think that was before our last, or yeah. There was a letter sent anyhow to uh, Minister McIver on trying to get a meeting with him, which is, Ariana has received some dates. Nothing I think, I don't think anything has been confirmed yet. Checks for payment, the payment register. Are there any questions from, from that? If not, Brian? Well, maybe I fell asleep here, but I thought we had one more resolution that we hadn't talked about the flood mitigation one. Oh, sorry. I actually wanted some more information on that. Uh, it's a bit vague for me as far as what their, uh, what the intent of it is. Oh, yes, I, there is that because that, um, was talked about, is that the last one? Oh, 21 of 22, yes, the National Flood Insurance Strategy. And I know that um, the Government of Canada is reducing the money that's going to the provinces, so the provinces are going to reduce the money that goes to the municipalities. I heard that in a town hall um, a couple of Friday nights ago with Jason Kenny and Rick McIver. So I think this must be part of that, this national tax force, task force on flood insurance. So Brian, so I what guess were I, 
Well, I guess know. I'm just curious about the how the I mean it, it mentions the insurance bureau of Canada. Approximately 39 percent of landowners have access have access in 19, 2019 to overland flood insurance. So I always struggle with the fact that most people have insurance. Um, if you're not able to get flood insurance, you're probably because you live in an area that floods. Um, so how does how can I support, I, I have to ask myself, how can I support provincial and federal government shoring up something that should be covered by insurance? I don't know, like, like maybe that's too simplistic, it probably is, but I just, I think that if you can buy insurance to cover your losses, you should, whether it's fire, hail, flood, whatever. Um, and I'm not sure there's a place for taxpayer money in that pool, but uh, I need to understand that better. And that's why I just wanted to get maybe a different perspective on it. No, I, I think that's fair enough perspective. Anne-Marie? Um, and I also wrote down that that um, resolution was too general, but you know, I thought it's probably good to keep the conversation going even if it's the federal and the provincial governments talking about where their roles are and they might decide that we have no role it needs to be the insurance but that conversation needs to keep going because you tend to forget that there was a flood in 2018 and then when we get another one in 2023 then the discussion still has to start then so i'm i'm comfortable with keeping the discussion going And that, that is a part of this, isn't it? Like it's to, to ask that the government of Alberta participate in the conversation. Maybe we'll learn more about it. Lionel? Yes, but I, in a lot of cases, you know, the, the, the insurance may not be available because of the, the premiums, because of the, the size of the premiums. And the premiums are, are based directly on your risk. So people that don't buy insurance, a lot of cases, you're right, Brian, they're, they're in an area where they don't, they, you can't get it because of, because of they're in a high risk area. So I'm not sure about this one. I sort of like crop insurance. We went through that same discussion with crop insurance and the crop insurance was available to everybody, but premiums are still varied depending on your risk. And so the high risk areas, they wouldn't buy it. And then they complained after the fact. And I think Molly, you've known something a little bit about that <laughs> with grass insurance. Yeah, it'll be an interesting one to listen to as well. I think, you know, maybe municipalities in the past haven't taken enough um, responsibility for where we've let people build houses too. I, I don't know. Everybody wants to build on the riverbank, except for me. I don't. I, don't, I want to be up on a hill out in the wind, I guess. <laughs> but um, yeah. I think we all have our a role to play going forward, but I don't think we can go on paying whole piles of money out for all these things that are going on. Unless unless the the average person is part of the solution too. Well, listen, Brian and Brian, are you uh, signed up for convention? Yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry about that. Missing that one. Is that everything now on resolutions? So we'll go on to the payment register. If there's no questions, we need a motion for acceptance. Hubie? Hubie moves uh, acceptance of the payment register. All in favor? Opposed? Motion is carried. Uh, request for function of functions of council. 
Anne Marie? Um, we started working on the bylaws of the Foothills Little Bow, and so far it's been email exchange between uh, the six people that are working on this. But we're going to have some Zoom meetings, and I thought, well, maybe I should ask if that I can do that as a function of council. I'm not going to charge for the emails, but if we're going to have one or two Zoom meetings, then I would like to charge for that, if that's okay with you. Can we get a motion? Tracy? Motion to approve the request. For the Foothills Little Bow Bylaw Revision meetings for Anne Marie's attendance. All in favor? Opposed? Motion is carried. Any other requests for functions of council? Question. Um, over the past number of years, some of us, well, I think all of us have had the opportunity to attend an AUMA convention or whatever they call them. And that's always been the one in the fall, correct? Because I just got information on their spring caucus. Ariana has her hand, her hand raised. Maybe she knows the answer to this. Go ahead, Ariana. In the past couple of years, we've been sending two councillors, and that is the one that they their annual convention in the fall. Okay, perfect. Because I just got information on the spring caucus, I think they call it. Maybe that's just Reeves and Mayors, so I don't even remember. But I won't worry. I won't look at it very much more then. Because uh, next fall, uh, we can figure that out for the convention. All right, no other requests for function of council. We will go on to the Director of Municipal Services report and there is his smiling face. Hello, Mark. Douglas, hello to everybody. Uh, this month's report, uh, you know, there were 36 warnings issued, 30 tickets, uh, 11 investigations conducted by municipal enforcement. Uh, for the traffic um, priorities uh, being distracted driving, winter driving and fatigue, only one warning issued by officers in that and zero tickets. Continue patrolling our partner municipalities and uh, as you were presented today, the department continues to review and update bylaws. So thank you for those considerations earlier today. Uh, fleet services, new capital acquisitions are being put into service as uh, they roll in and time permits, uh, replacing old units as per the approved budgets. Uh, we're um, working with operations really and the Geotab AVL sensors on plow trucks. Uh, once those sensors are, are kind of uh, on track with recording plow up down, sander on off, wing up down, um, then we'll look at uh, rolling those sensors into other pieces of equipment as well. And uh, really that just gives us a GPS record that we can see on a map on our roads where, uh, what activities have taken place and we can start to uh, better defend any liability claims against the county. Um, but really, you know, I don't want to jinx ourselves, but we haven't had anything as of late for claims coming our way in any sort of nature regarding that. Operations perspective, uh, you know, that extreme cold weather that we experienced in February, uh, there wasn't any work for greater operators uh, maintaining roads. They are generally out there performing uh, vegetation management, cutting trees and brushing. Uh, really with that extreme cold, uh, productivity is at a minimum out in those winds and, and cold weather. So uh, we agreed to have them use some of their accrual time to uh, remain at home and avoid frostbite and other things. It's just not really high priority work in uh, temperatures like that that are, that are risk-based. So other than that, um, as you heard from uh, operations manager earlier, we might end up with three feet of snow yet, who knows? Uh, we've been pretty safe so far through the month of February. We've definitely been treated to some phenomenal early spring weather. Um, our thaw, I guess if you call it a thaw, there, there really hasn't been much snow due to other melt uh, events taking place. 
and and thankfully to date you know rosemary's been one of our largest areas still prone prone to overland flooding uh there's been absolutely nothing that i've been that's been brought to my attention from a rate payer or the operation side uh and on that note this will be the first year that we uh kick off the eid partnership on drainage improvements in the rosemary area so we're ramping up for that and hopefully in the five-year window that we believe we need uh, we will alleviate the majority of overland flooding that has been experienced in the past uh, additionally truck drivers again not really responding to anything on paved roads so uh, winter stockpiling program is, is currently well we're a little bit beyond 83 percent complete in a way but at time of preparation of the report that's where we were and really weather's been really conducive for productivity in the stockpiling maintenance operators continue doing what they're doing assisting in various areas maintaining road signs and and they completed uh, 19 work orders over the month uh, nearly a paperless environment within operations we're making some more changes to our work order process making it more electronic with the rollout of uh, tablet devices earlier in 2020 to all of our field staff uh, really trying to get away from any kind of paper production whatsoever in those areas which will make us more efficient and uh, and that is really going along well staff have been very good at uh, making suggestions making other changes and things and uh, adopting new practices to their daily activities seasonal laborers uh, i believe two former are returning and i believe we've got the two offers out to hire two new seasonal employees for the year and uh, as well as that the gravel season the uh, gravel foreman that is also a seasonal position has been confirmed to be returning to us so that'll be good engineering range road 14.5 this is the project that we submitted for municipal stimulus funding under the government program um, it's uh, it's moving forward surveys complete preliminary designs in progress and uh, we'll be addressing those matters as, as things come about and hopefully getting that tender package out as soon as possible so that we can see that uh, project completed through the construction season this year long-term aggregate supply uh, was awarded to JD Mollard early in earlier in February phase one consisting of their historical data and 3d imagery review is ongoing right now uh, once they get through that stage of things, uh, review of the findings and whatnot, and uh, they'll narrow it down to doing some non-intrusive field investigation. Uh, some of that is um, like radar based to sense different soils and whatnot under, underground, obviously, and to try to target more of the uh, granular side of things for aggregate uh, sourcing. And by delineating that, we reduce the amount of time that we spend in the field with large equipment digging test pits, to determine what's going on so a couple of different phases that'll be coming throughout here and uh, spring summer fall is really when we're going to start to see um, whether the preliminary investigation led us to sources how big those sources are and then we'll put it into council's court for consideration with uh, some options of how we may want to proceed with securing sources if we are successful in that regard uh, One Tree Road overlay tender was awarded in early February to Brooks Asphalt and Aggregate and uh, they continue working on two bridge file replacements, one non-bridge file that has uh, pipe replacements um, that are currently complete and uh, three other bridge file extensions and if they get those all done, which weather's been phenomenal, uh, we'll be set up to get that overlay done. Um, easily within the construction season this year. So that'll be nice to get that road improved uh, to new standard. And other than that, we just trying to work on strategic plan, uh, the SWOT analysis updates, those remain in progress and process and procedure documentation. Final attachment to the report, of course, is a per permit activity report. You can see based on January and February, we are really running at 50% of what our normal permits are. Um, I'm not sure what the impact has been with the changes to the permit um, requirements under the changes of the, of the um, weights and, and dimensions that we've talked about in the past, but I, I'm still gonna attribute this to the fact that 
we all know it's an economic downturn and things aren't proceeding as, as quickly as they used to be for us in the oil and gas sector. So uh, we're running light on the, uh, on the averages there. So if there's any questions of council, I'd be happy to address what I can. Tracy, Anne-Marie, Kelly. Mark, my question is just about, um, I don't know what you call them, but those black or those white poles with the black stripes that are around the road approaches and stuff. How many do you do of those a year? Because it seems <laughs> like you go out and you put them up and then you go by a week later and they're laying down again. And I just think, wow, like how many do you actually repair in a year? And what does that cost us? Because that's just crazy. I don't know. People just must drive through the ditches to turn the corner. I don't know. <laughs> Admittedly, uh, some of the damages are from in-house services, such as snow plowing, um, potentially mowing, um, other activities, just because you've got a wing five, six feet out from the side of the vehicle, you're not always exactly aware where that is. And, and really we're, we're talking about a few inches that these guys are trying to get that snow cleared out for. I, I don't have a number off the top of my head as to how many we replace per year. Uh, it's significant. Those delineators, uh, they do have a white reflective band across uh, the, the middle of the, the black top. Those are indicators for motorists as to where intersections, road approaches and things are. They are part of Alberta traffic or Alberta transportation standards for uh, proper delineation of roadways and such. And we do our best to keep those things up. We also know that there's rate payers out there that just don't like them and they just take them down themselves and pack them somewhere else. Um, We've competed with that. We try to strike that balance, but really there is a standard out there from Alberta Transportation and we try to uphold that. Thanks. <laughs> and Marie and Kelly. Patricia area, Mark. Once, uh, Tracy, I, um, I, I just went around and loaded them up and brought them back to Mark. <laughs> Anyway, my question is about the uh, GeoTap a, uh, AVL. So you're talking about liability, but it will eventually give you lots of information about maintenance cost of a road that could hopefully be used when we get that report, um, the priority report on the different roads. Uh, absolutely. So, so where we're at is where we're continuing with our regular routine of things. You know, we have our grading routine. We we have our snowplow routes and whatnot. Um, sometimes we just don't have the boots on the ground to know exactly what's happened in what region where. Do we dispatch? Don't we dispatch? But um, with some of this, I, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of opportunities to gain operational efficiencies. Um, we're talking about updating the rural road study right now as well that we want to have tied to our asset management plan. Um, how we prioritize the roads with the grading, with, with plowing, um, how many ratepayers live on it, how many don't, what kind of traffic generators and things. Uh, that, that whole program already, well the AVL is feeding into the system, but right now we track a lot of that through our work order system anyway. So gravel haul tickets are already input into the work tech system and we have costs on how much gravel, what cost goes into it for labor equipment, fuel insurance, um, upkeep and maintenance on fleet and everything like that. Uh, it, it's going to be one more component to leverage to, to help tighten up those numbers and, and try to find operational efficiencies when we get fully implemented, yes. Thank you. Um, Kelly, Hubie, Wayne. Um, so Mark, um, just uh, I wonder if Council would like a, a, an update on the um, fence setback. Um, I know you're just waiting for spring to come, but maybe the rest of Council would want to know. Are you talking about the land acquisition over in Bazano? Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, fair question. I didn't include that in my report. Uh, so earlier, or I guess that was about June period last year, um, we identified that Range Road 18-2 was not centered in the road allowance leading from Highway 550 North, uh, which is just east of the Highway 1 intersection um, by 100 meters probably. And we have wetland uh, classification on east and west sides of the road. We did proceed with a five meter land acquisition for the first um, 1.6 kilometers or one mile leading north uh, due to fence encroachment, due to the wetland, things like that. And instead of trying to rebuild the road at uh, an exorbitant cost, uh, the pursuit of land acquisition with the landowner was sought. That was secured. We've got the legal survey complete. It's been, uh, it's in process of being registered with land titles right now. I've engaged three fencing companies at this time to get new fence installed on property line. Um, currently, uh, I've got two that have provided some feedback. They, they want to discuss the matter a little bit more because fencing through wetlands, um, longevity of the posts, what materials we use is a challenging thing. Time is a little bit of the essence because you can do fencing through wetlands in winter when they're frozen. If they're thawed, then you get to go through the process of uh, wetland assessment, Water Act approval, and all that fun stuff. So trying to get that resolved. Uh, it was Councillor Amulung that asked that when we look at that complete two mile stretch of road, what does the northerly mile or 1.6 kilometers look like? And I see that he's not here today. Uh, when we surveyed that, that fence line is very, very close to existing property line. Uh, sometimes it's just inside of, sometimes it's just outside of. Uh, you know, we're, I don't think council wants to get into a debate with the landover over shifting their, their fence six inches when it's not an operational issue right now. Hopefully when fencing needs to be redone on that northerly 1.6 kilometers, the landowner will have legal survey out there to confirm where the property line and get it aligned to where it needs to be but it's nothing that I want to go through the process or, or would uh, consider, would, would ask council to consider uh, asking the landowner to relocate it at this time. I, I don't think that's a valuable exercise right now. It is not grossly out of place. Is that fair enough, Councillor Gispin? Is that what you're looking for? Yeah, um, and I just wanted to make um, note to all the rest of council that um, the town of Bizano has started their sewage lagoon project. And if you drive by on the highway now, you'll see lots of activity. Um, never saw so much activity on the on the slough all these years. So um, check it out. Don't don't blink on your way by. There's something to see there now. <laughs> Phase one. Phase one, more to come. Thanks, Kelly. It's good news for the town as well. Uh, Hubie, Wayne. Thanks, Molly. Um, we're all aware of how dangerous washboards are. So I just want to compliment Mark and his team on uh, the old number one highway here out of Tilly. It's got some speed corners that are very dangerous because of the washboard. And Todd came out there last week and he straightened all those out so that we wouldn't have any wrecks. So I really appreciate that. That was a good job. Thank you for sharing that, Hubie. It's definitely been a bit of a challenge with the warm weather because the, the top inch or so of the road surface is thawed, allowing that aggregate to move around a little bit more. Um, the challenging part right now at this time of year with washboard is there's only about a two, two and a half, maybe three inch crust on the top of those roads that really holds things together. And if we get in there right now and we start ripping those, uh, that washboard out and cutting too deep with the spring thaw, roads are already getting soft. And if we break that crust, uh, we, we would have significant issues for our rate payers and the motorists on our roads. So kudos to our operators. They're using their discretion. They're working with Terry to make sure that they're doing things right. Um, but it is challenging in some areas with washboard and, uh, and definitely with roads getting soft. So, um, I, I appreciate those comments. We'll make sure they get passed along. Yes, always good to let people know when they're doing a good job. It's usually easy to do the other thing. Wayne. 
Hi, Mark. Thanks, Molly. Uh, could you give us an update on that well that's being drilled on the Lagoon Quarter in Scandia? Are we making any money on that deal? Or what? <laughs> Um, Lane is sitting in here. Uh, Lane oversees the sign off on the agreements, the rates that get secured for uh, new oil wells and stuff. I, I honestly can't tell you, I could ballpark it, but I don't want to misstate anything, so I'll leave it with Lane. And I'm going to have to defer back to the original agreement that one was signed a while back, so we'll get the information for you. Another thing, Lane, uh, is uh. Peterson's gonna is is that gonna interfere with them farming that corner this summer this spring? As far as we know, it won't. Let us find out the details on the agreement. Yeah, I, I think a little bit to that one, Councillor Hammergren is it's it's close to an existing pad site down in there, so I don't think it has any bearing or effect on what they are farming. Um, but yeah, as per the agreement, um, Lane will confirm that for you. Thanks. Ryan? Just wanted an up update on North Headgate's construction. I've seen Jeff just came back on, so I thought I'd take that opportunity to find out where we're at as far as the, the summer or construction season, where they're at and what's the timeline. It's all yours, Jeff. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, North Headgates. Uh, I've been thinking about it and talking about it all winter, and uh, good question. Glad to uh, give an update. So everybody uh, may or may not be aware, Brooks Asphalt was out there last year, and they um, completed uh, most of the grading and construction on the roadway down the east side of the development. They've completed the uh, building of the actual swale along that side. Um, and started working on approaches and so on and so forth. Um, one, one of the uh, issues which kind of worked out nice for our timing and the amount of work they got done is there is a home on the east side of the development that does require to be moved to one of the vacant lots. Um, so I've been working together with the landowner here over the last number of months, uh, communicating with companies that uh, you know, perform that type of work and can get set up to move that uh, structure onto a foundation of, of some flavor. Um, that is our kind of next line of business here. I have a meeting to, uh, supposed to be tomorrow or Monday with the landowner and, and the gentleman who owns the house. And uh, hopefully uh, we're, we're going to get it sorted out. And, and as soon as uh, the weather permits us to get uh, the, the new property cleared and, and set up for the move, we'll, we'll get that moved. Um, that's a, quite an important uh, part of this because Fortis does need to come in and realign their power lines as well. Um, so we're, we're kind of doing a bit of a juggling act here. That's kind of the first step. Um, and, and then once that's moved, Fortis and, and Brooks Asphalt can move back in and, and kind of they, they have a plan to work back and forth and, and Brooks Asphalt will move to the west side and complete that work as Fortis moves the lines on the east and then, and then they'll flip over. So um, it, it's a bit of a juggling act right now. It's a bit weather dependent and it's a bit dependent on us getting this uh, house move arranged and lined up. Um, that being said, uh, you know, weather is getting better here. So we really hope to get at it sooner rather than later. I'm thinking that house move could possibly happen as early as, uh, you know, late April, early May, just depending on the weather. Um, what, what else? Um, on top of that, from the construction, we've also been working with WSP uh, Engineering, who did the design and, and supervision of that project on, uh, uh, you know, working towards the actual subdivision application to separate those lots out there. Um, we have a meeting next week to update, but we do have a, a rough plan of subdivision. They had to go out and confirm all the existing structures on the property, and then we're going to have to make an assessment on, um, you know, what needs to be removed, what needs to be moved before we can finalize that subdivision. But again, I trying to run everything concurrently. I hope to get that uh, application in and, and we can process that kind of early summer and uh, kind of everything hopefully rolls up nicely and we can wind it all up here uh, come July, August time.
Thanks, Jeff. Any other questions? For public works or planning? No? All good. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Jeff. All right. Can we get a motion, please? Oh, for the reports, yes. Thank you. Thank you. QB will make that motion. All in favor? Opposed? Motion is carried for acceptance of the municipal reports. QB. Okay, so we move down to item 11.1. .1, and it looks like we have an appointment to the library board in division two. Kelly. Uh, motion to approve uh, Hubie's uh, fines. Thank you, Hubie, for again providing uh, another person in the Tilly area to be on the Newell Library Board. Um, it was recently we just approved a lady, um, but I don't think she realized how much technology uh, we rely on at this time. And so she was uh, unable to attend the meetings. Oh. Yeah. That's unfortunate. Um, Anne-Marie? Um, can, we, can we know a little bit about this lady and her background before we appoint her? Hubie? Her name is Jane Marsh. She is... Uh, sister-in-law to Max Tateson, and she helps run the Spike and Spur little store downtown here that used to be the old post office. Originally born and raised in Vauxhall, and she moved here a couple of years ago, and she's very involved with cats as well, the cats group. So she's a very community-minded person. Thank you, Hubie. Um, any other questions? All in favor of Kelly's motion to make this appointment? Opposed? Motion is carried. And moving on down, the mon mini bus monthly report is there. And is there anything else before we move in camera? I think, Ariana, have we covered the agenda? No. I think we have. So we need a motion to move in camera. Ellen will make that motion. All in favor? Opposed? Motion is carried. 